Welcome back to Maintainer's Garage. I'm Bags. Today we're going to be working on my wife's 2008 Miata. She drove it about a month ago and check engine light came on. I checked it. It was for a uh, not <laughs> insufficient coolant temperature for desired operation is what it was. Uh, 0126 I think it was. Yeah, 0126. I got it on a note over there. so I know I got it right. Anyway, I checked uh, the the coolant was just a hair low, so maybe it's just a little low coolant. It was about 25 or 30 degrees that day. So I added just a little bit of coolant, reset the engine light, and let her go forward. No big deal. A couple weeks went by, check engine light was gone, thought we were okay. Lo and behold, another 25 degree day came, and then check engine light came back on, and same code. 0126, insufficient coolant temperature for operation. For desired operation what i think is happening is this is the new thermostat that we're going to change this spring sometimes gets worn out and you don't get a good seal so what i think is happening is, is i think the spring is allowing coolant to flow by it and it's not the the engine in getting as hot as it normally would sometimes those symptoms are it won't blow hot air won't blow heat when you need heat well the heat was working just fine we just think it was just a little bit outside the uh range you know it was just it was it was bypassing just enough to where when it was really really cold it would trigger that check engine light so that's why i decided it was this and not the actual sensor because the sensor if, it, if the sensor was going out you figured it wouldn't take a 25 degree day for that sensor to go bad right so that's just kind of where i i had a choice between sensor wiring and this thermostat i chose the thermostat and that's why speaking of and i'll show you the check engine light and again i've just talked about this before this is a little obd2 code reader i have another one that's more expensive i talk about this one the most because it's 30 to 35 dollars you can get these anywhere it will read the code it will reset the code so for me, it works very well, and it's, it's inexpensive. That's why I like to try to use it. I've got my other one. That'll, this will even show live data. If you just need to read your codes and reset your light, I mean, you can go down to the local auto uh, store, and they'll do that sometimes. Sometimes they won't reset it. Or you can spend the $25, $30, $35 and get one of these and be able to do that all the time. Just my suggestion. Uh, let me show you that and then uh, we'll come back and I'll show you where this is located. This is the steering wheel of my wife's 2008 Miata. Down there where the light is, is where that port is for the code. And if you go down there, there's the clutch, brake, and gas pedal. If you go to the left of that, there's a fuse box. When you go up, oops, just above that. That's where the OBD2 port is. That's where you plug in to read and reset codes. When you plug your code reader in, it should power up, letting you know you got a good link. Then you just turn the car to the on position. You don't start it, you just turn it on. Enter button. And that is on OBD2. And it'll scan and figure out what uh, protocol to use then it goes through it once it figures it out it shows you and then you can see codes found one code so we get on stored codes hit enter and then it reads codes and then that's our code insufficient coolant temperature for stable operation the thermostat is located it's it's hard to see but i believe it'll be easy to change this is a throttle body. There's a plastic air intake tube that connects to the box that holds the air filter, the air box. If you take this one corrugated tube out, I believe you'll be able to we'll be able to change that. So if you take you can find this tube, if you look just underneath that and towards the engine just a little bit, you'll see the thermostat. And there's two tubes that go right into it. I'm going to try to get my little camera down there and see if I can show you with all this stuff. If not, we'll definitely be able to see it when I pull it off. And like I said, I'm really hoping once we pull this out of the way, we'll just be able to change that thermostat. So I've got my little camera right here, and I'm going to try to not particularly zoom in. I'm just going to try to take the camera. Where the light is down there is where that thermostat is, and that's why I wanted to start out 
kind of far away and get down and see if I could show it to you. And man, it is just about impossible to see down there. But that's where it is. Before you start the job, just make sure you've got a new thermostat to replace the old one with. Make sure it's got a gasket in it. You need radiator fluid. I don't know how much is going to come out. Could be 10 ounces, could be a gallon. I don't know, I've never done this job. We're gonna find out together. Just make sure you have an, uh, at least a gallon of FL22 or similar radiator fluid for uh, NC Miata. A pan to catch however much fluid drains out. And I'll mention the tools here because I don't know what they are yet. But right now, I'll put a list on the screen of exactly what tools it takes. It's these two snaps. There's a plug right here. You just got to push the connector, the back of the connector down, and it slides off. Then a Phillips head screwdriver to loosen up these spring clamps. Did enough? All right, come on. And of course, we have a little. That this harness is on this air box cover. Let's see if I can separate all of this. That just snaps down into that. That plug. You press the back. It'll release this spring tab. You can pull it right off. Set that right there. See if we can get this uh, elbow off, and that's the elbow I was pointing to. Yeah, we don't. I don't think we're going to need to actually disconnect all those hoses. You can just move it up out of the way, and just down below here is where that thermostat is. Okay, so there's the throttle body, just below the throttle body. Where I'm going to try to not to. So there's not the smaller tube, but the larger tube, and then there's a tube right above it there it's a better picture you can see the plastic extension and the upper plastic extension there are one spring clamp and another spring clamp and I'm trying to make sure I can see without being too bright there's two spring clamps so if you have a pair of pliers you grab those spring clamps you take those two tabs you press them together and then you slide those clamps away from the engine towards the camera and those tubes will come off. And that's what we'll do now. So before I go too much farther, I'd just like to say, hey, thanks for all the new subscribers. Welcome. I'm going to do another intro video before too long. I appreciate you. Uh, thanks for the comments. Again, if you think I'm doing something and I could do something better, please let me know. If you like it, like, hit the like button. You like everything, subscribe. I'm getting ready to uh, block the camera here. I've moved the camera around. Me and the camera need to occupy the same space. I haven't been able to get a good place for the camera that I can figure this out. Uh, I'm going to do the best that I can. That's why I use my little camera a lot of times just to show you where I'm doing, where I'm going and what I'm doing. I have a long handled angled nose, needle nose pliers. The clamp is, the large one is down there. The smaller one for the secondary tube is right there. Where's my, this is the new one. It sits in there just like this. So you've got the smaller clamp here, the larger clamp here on the old unit attached to the car. And it's got three mount bolts. And again, you just grab that clamp, squeeze, and if you can move it away from the motor, move it that direction outboard towards the driver door. The reason I was saying that is those springs uh, clamp down, they'll clamp down on the plastic so when you uh, close the ends the spring expands and you can slide it all the way off the plastic portion of this tube and then it'll just be on the hose out here for example. Same thing here so when you grab the hose you can actually slide it off and then you know if the clamps here and you just move it a little bit it, the clamp's still going to be around this plastic and it's going to hit the slip. You're not going to be able to put the tube on. That's why I'm just showing you this one. Sometimes it takes a little bit of uh, coaxing to get these 
things moving. These are kind of snug fits and you just have to kind of finagle it and wiggle it and sometimes get a little angry at it. With rubber hoses in general, if you grab the hose and twist it, spin it, that'll break free and then you can slide it off. Again, I have no idea how much fluid is coming out of here. I just know fluid's coming out of here. All right, well, let's uh, see what we can do here. If we can. Oh, yeah, she's coming right off. All right. And there's a radiator spill. No problem there. That's why I said, that's why I put the bucket down below. Let's see if I even got that little tray in. Uh, nope. I missed. If you want to catch your radiator fluid that spills out, you're going to want to put your pan in about middle of the engine, back center. If you know where the cross member is, that's where the fluid's going to come out. Yeah, I didn't know that. I had it somewhere else. I was wrong. <laughs> Not the first time, won't be the last. Another trick is picks. You don't want to try to get in there and tear a hole in the tube, in the coolant hose. You All you want to do is just get it in there and get a little bit of separation from the hose and the plastic. If it gets enough separation, you just want to break that. You know, they've just, they've, <laughs> they've bonded together a little bit. And again, you're not trying to poke a hole in the hose. You're just trying to get the hose to separate from the plastic just a tiny little bit. They got a little bit of stiction up between the two of them. All right, I think we got some movement. Yeah, definitely got some movement. It's getting ready to come off. Whew. You just got to keep working it and working it and working it. And once it gets a little bit of movement, it wants to come right off. I was able to get this upper hose off and it is very stiff. It's a fabric reinforced hose, so you're going to have to kind of bend it out around, up around the throttle body right there. And that may give us access to that other two fasteners. This is where, if you worked on cars a while, you don't always have to see it, but if you can touch it, that helps. I can definitely touch the lower one. I'm having a hard time getting on it cleanly because of that hose. Just move this little hose out of the way and we can get that out. All right, let's take the old thermostat out. This is not quite as easy as I'd hoped. Taking the throttle body off would definitely help. I can't see this upper back one. So, and I can't put my hand on it, so I just literally put my hand near it in the vicinity and kept moving around until I got on it. And now we'll see if I can get it out. Nope, and I dropped that one. Uh, and truly no clue where it went to. Well, I'm going to keep pressing forward because if I've got to take something off to find that fastener, um, I'm just going to keep going and I'm going to try to bring this thermostat and that last fastener out all as one. And Old part, new part look identical. That's always good. Now we just got to go in there and find that fastener. Err, mistakes were made. What ha happened was, yeah, long story short, I couldn't find that fastener I dropped. I was committed to finding that fastener I dropped. I knew it didn't go down the coolant passage, but I couldn't guarantee it wasn't behind a pulley or on a pulley, so I put the car up on my quick jack. I'm gonna change the oil on it now too. I was pot committed 
to locating this and then after two hours it was okay I'm not gonna locate it but let's make sure it's not in any place that's gonna hurt anything else that led me to remove the throttle body there's a crevice behind the throttle body and it's down just below the thermostat I couldn't get to it I couldn't see it from any other way I removed the throttle body to see if I could find something and then there's a little triangular shaped crevice I couldn't get my borescope in it and turn it around I just shoved my magnet in there wiggled it around then I slowly pulled it out and I heard something drop shoved it back in there pulled it out even slower while looking saw the screw and get it you just got to be committed sometimes and if you know for sure it didn't go anywhere that's going to hurt anything you can move on if you're not sure you got to find out the last thing I wanted to do was and it was behind it was wedged in between the AC condenser and one of those crevices casting crevices on the outside of the block worst case would have been it getting out coming out of there while my wife was driving or I was driving and end up jacking up the AC compressor and everything else yeah all BS aside this I'm I'm into hour number three of this actually three and a half and I found it what was it worth to me to find that bolt that's the wrong question what was it worth to me if I didn't find it is the, is the question I asked myself it was worth at least a thousand dollars if I didn't find it that's why I said after a couple hours of looking I switched gears and said okay let's make sure it's in no it's in no place that can harm me and what I mean by me is harm the car and thus harm my wife or myself just my nickel and again you're gonna some days you're the windshield some days you're the bug but even when you're the bug you got to take your smashed ass and recuperate and keep pushing forward all right now that we're back to our regularly scheduled program missing a few parts <laughs> take a, a rag and just wipe around the uh, where the thermostat housing goes you just want to clean up any gunk or make sure it's okay this feels okay there is no sealant involved the gaskets installed just push it down make sure it's good everything looks okay orientation is like this I'm gonna put in this forwardmost bolt first then that one save that one for last with it disconnected and I mean just unbolted leaving all the connections you gain a little bit of flexibility with moving it around and being able to get in to the fasteners so it could definitely one could say it would you know make the job easier and with four fasteners I mean you're talking maybe 15 minutes worth of work to possibly save you three hours and I'm not taking my hand off this thing until I know for sure that that front fastener is started because that's the one that I dropped I've got the socket in there now trying to start it all right uh, yep we're started Whew. son of a motherless goat now that top one was a royal pain that top back one I'm gonna see about moving the throttle body a little bit yeah that definitely helped with that top back one for sure one of my favorite solutions is you take a piece of duct tape stick it on and you can see I just made sure uh, make sure you use the right end not the freaking end that the <laughs> ratchet goes into and once you get it on there and you're gonna hear a hammering sound that's me tapping that fastener and that duct tape in that thing is not coming off once I get it started I can pry it off like that yeah. we'll rinse and repeat on 
hammer tap. Now, as I grab this and rotate it, that gives me that much more. That plastic tube won't be in the way. And I can just put this in. And then, like I said, I can, once I get this bolt started, rock this off, grab that tape, be done. That's the theory anyway. We'll, we'll see how the uh, practice goes. Practice? We're talking about practice. For those of y'all old enough to remember Alan Iverson's famous speech. And we're threaded and making sure I'm threaded. Like I'm threading like a lot of threads. Yep. And alrighty, pop that off. There's your socket. You don't even have to stick your hand in there. You can just get a long pair of needle nose. Grab a piece of that tape. Of course, it's going to tear on me because I've uh, made it seem like this is an easy solution. And done. Yeah, eight millimeter bolts is what we got here. Uh, again. Snug is the torque I'm going with. Snug works great. And if you really need a, a figure, my guess would probably be around 20 foot pounds. It's a little rubber gasket. I tried to get a good picture of it. You're not trying to deform that thing with, you know, 200 foot pounds. You're just trying to get it installed and get it snug to where it forms a good watertight seal. I'm using a composite Harbor Freight ratchet, quarter inch extension, quarter inch eight millimeter. That, that way I can't gorilla this. And I'm gonna do the upper forward one first. The one single lower one next. And then I'll do the aft top one. Now I've tightened all three fasteners and I'm coming back and hitting them one last time to make sure they are all snug. Now it's time to put our hoses back on. I'm going to put the smaller hose back on. Start it on the plastic thermostat housing and just push it down until it bottoms out. Then we'll use our handy dandy pliers to grab the clamp. Which is a little easier to do now with the thermostat or the throttle body out of the way. You want to slide that clamp as far forward as you can making sure you get without going too far and getting off of it. There's probably going to be an indention from the clamp previously. I'll put it right back on that same rubber indention. Now we have our large tube hose that you just put right on. Same thing and it's got a little lip that won't allow you to go any further so once you push it up against that lip you're done. Same thing here, grab your clamp and just move it back. Now you just have to put everything else you took off back on. I didn't take the thermostat housing off to begin with on camera. It's got four eight millimeter bolts. It, this is not the Jesus bolt holding, you know, the engine and the transmission together, not holding the propeller on, nothing like that. All of them are snug. All right. Now I'm going to reattach our accordion elbow, which is as easy as it looks. And snap that one in. And if you stick your hand on the bottom of this thing, there will be no separation. All right. Those are snapped in. I put our one connector on our math back on. 
there's a screw that gets tightened on this accordion here, another screw that gets tightened on the accordion there. Everything in here is secure. We lost about a half a gallon of fluid. Get coolant, take the cap off. You're going to fill this up to the full line. And then you're going to start the car with the cap off. I uh, finished my video off by talking about how to bleed the coolant system. And then I started bleeding the coolant system, put my camera equipment away, and it didn't work. Normally, what you do when you bleed the coolant system is, after you've tightened everything back up, refill the reservoir up to the full level. Leave the cap off. Start the car. Let it get up to operating temperature on the Miata. There are two ports on the overflow tank. Both of those will flow when it gets to that optimum temperature. It means the thermostat's opening. You'll see coolant flow into here. You can shut the car off, let the car cool completely down, let the radiator fluid get cold. The cap will still be off. You check the fluid level. You add some if you need to, again, back to the full level. Start the car, let it get up to operating temperature. These two ports flow in. Shut the car down, check the fluid level. Normally three of those takes care of everything. On the third one, I checked the heater just to make sure it was working. It was cold. I started touching coolant hoses around the car and when I got to this one, it was cold. Now, I touched this metal tube, but I just want to give you a quick demonstration. You never touch hot tubing metal with your fingers like that. You always want to use the back of your hand. Because if you touch it with the front, your natural reaction is to close. If you touch with the back of your hand, your natural reaction is close, so it pulls away. I touched this metal tube right here. It was cold. That goes to the heater core. This tube is actually higher than the overflow tank, so that makes that the high point of the system. I removed this clamp, pulled this tube off while the engine was cold, while the engine was off. Let a little bit of fluid out, reconnected it. Bled the system again. It didn't fix my heat problem. Pulled it off a second time, reconnected it again, it did. Topped up the fluid, everything was good. I just want to follow up with that is to, uh, you may run into this problem and be like, man, this dude on this video, he, it didn't work like that in my car. Well, I'm telling you how it worked in my car, so hopefully your uh, car bleeds a little easier than this one. But if you're running that problem, make sure before you uh, take off driving on the road, you check the heater and make sure the heater works. And if it doesn't, give that a shot. Anyway, thanks for watching my Tanner's Garage. Have a great day.